And with this in mind, let's talk about my favorite Facebook. When Facebook first launched in 2004, it started as a niche social network site that was only accessible to those privileged enough to have a Harvard.edu account and eventually other .edu accounts. As it spread, it's built, it built its reputation on being a closed system. People trusted the service because they felt it provided boundaries and helped people navigate social norms. As it grew, it was interpreted by the public as the anti-MySpace. While MySpace was all about publicly accessible content, even as people were actively you know, seeking privacy, Facebook was narrated as closed, intimate, a more genuine place for friends. And I roamed about the United States interviewing teenagers. I was continuously told that Facebook was safer because it was more private. And that's why they loved the site. Now, first impressions matter. People go to great lengths to twist any new information that they may hear about, to actually reinterpret it in light of their first impression, rather than altering their first impression. And to this day, many of the average Facebook users that I talk to still believe that Facebook is about privacy. They believe that they understand how information flows on privacy, and they believe they understand the tools that allow them to control what's going on. Unfortunately, their confidence obscures the fact that most don't understand what's going on. They don't understand their privacy settings. They don't understand when data is being made out. And it's that mismatch that I think is really important to analyze. During its tenure, Facebook has made an unbelievable number of moves that have complicated people's understanding of context, resulting in numerous outpourings around frustrations of privacy.